Hello and welcome back to Life of Posey. A couple of weeks ago, we did a giveaway for a custom made dog dress and today I am creating that dress. Our recipient's name was Chloe. She is a sweet Jack Russell and I'm so excited to make a dress for her and I hope that you will follow along and try to make one for your dog as well. I decided to go to Walmart and check out their fabric department and I was pleased with what I found. I thought that this little print here was just darling and I really love the red so I decided to batch it with just a simple plain red and I think that these will go lovely together. While I was there I also picked up this white poly cotton blend. This was really inexpensive. It was five dollars for two yards so that's only $2.50 a yard. You can't beat that and I think I'll use this for the lining. It's good to have some white cotton material on hand. It really does come in handy. And so I'm going to use this for the lining so that I don't have to cut out two pieces of this um, printed material here for the bodice. This will be on the underside and it will never be shown. So that would be perfect. So that's a good option. And I didn't even have to get this piece cut. It already comes in a two yard piece. These two I did have cut. I got a yard of this and it's only $4.44 for a yard. That is a really good price. That's not even the sale price. This is the price at Walmart. This one was $3.44 a yard, but they only had about three quarters of a yard left on the bolt. However, the man who cut my fabric gave it to me in the length of, I think he said half a yard. So it only came to $1.72. So those are really good prices. I would definitely recommend going to your local Walmart and seeing what their fabric department looks like. I was pleased with their selection. So I'm going to use this pretty floral print right here for my bodice and the skirt portion of the dress, but I want to make the skirt maybe three different layers and I want to incorporate this red. And I'm also going to see if I can tie this red into the bodice as well. I will cut my second piece of bodice out of the white material. So let's get started cutting this bodice out. All right, I finished cutting out both of my bodice pieces using the pattern I made for Miss Chloe. I used the measurements that her mommy gave me and I just cut them out after I made my pattern and now I am ready to start putting this dress together. What I would like to do next is use my red material to make two little overall straps. They will be faux overalls because they won't actually latch or buckle, but we would incorporate them into the bodice here. So I'm gonna get my red fabric out and show you what to do from here. I'm going to need these red strips of fabric to be at least as long as my bodice from the neck to the waistline. So for me, that's about, oh, I'd say nine inches and I'm gonna make them a little bit extra long. So I'm gonna go for 10 inches and I need to decide how wide I want those straps. And I really don't think that I want them much more than an inch and a half to two inches. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out some strips that are about 10 inches long. And then I'm going to double my width because I'm going to sew them completely around into a tube like shape. So I'm going to go ahead and cut mine. If I want them two inches wide, I'm going to cut them to four inches. Okay. I've got my two strips cut out 10 inches by four inches. And I'm just, these aren't exactly the final dimensions because we are gonna sew them and we have to allow for seam allowance, but I'm gonna fold them in half just, just to give me an idea of how wide they would be on here and kind of place them on the bodice to see if I like it. Now at this point, I actually think they're a little bit too wide, but I think by the time that quarter of an inch seam allowance is used up, they'll be better. So I'm going to say that this is actually good. So for me, this is great. If you have a smaller dog, you might want them tinier. And if you have a do bigger dog with a wider chest, you might want them thicker. So it's totally up to your preference. But now I'm going to bring, I'm going to move my bodice aside. I'm going to take my um, red strips of fabric over to the sewing machine, determine which side is good and which side is bad. But I'm going to fold them in half. And I'm going to stitch just right down here using about a quarter of an inch seam allowance on both of these. And then I'm going to pull them right side out so that seam doesn't show. So I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and do that. Okay, I'm back from the sewing machine and I have gone ahead and stitched these together using a quarter inch seam allowance. And now I'm going to flip them right side out. Now that my tubes are turned right side out, I'm going to bring them over to my ironing board and iron them flat so that the seam is right here 
in the middle. That way, when I flip it over, you won't see it over here on the side. You could iron them this way if you'd like, but I don't really like to see that seam. So if you lay them just like this and iron them flat, when you flip them over, it won't be noticeable. So I'm gonna go iron these. All right, I'm back from the iron and I've ironed these nice and flat with the seams in the back so they look lovely from the front. So now we're gonna lay our straps down on the bodice and see exactly where we would like them to be. And one thing to keep in mind is that you do want this strap to be caught in the seam where we close it up in the end. So your seam will be about a quarter of an inch down from the raw edge. So just kind of visualize that and make sure that this whole edge here of the strap actually gets caught in that seam. So for me, if I were to put it way over here, it would only get caught here and this part would just be loose in the finished result and we don't want that. So make sure it's going to actually get caught in the seam. And for me, that's about right there on both sides. So I'm gonna mess with it a little bit more, but once I get it where I want, I'm going to pin it down. Okay, now that I have mine pinned down into place, I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and run a little top stitch here about an eighth of an inch from the raw edge of the bodice, just following the shape of the bodice neckline at the top and right here at the bottom to secure these into place. Okay, I'm back from the sewing machine and I've stitched around here and at the bottom to keep these straps into place. If you wanted, you could even stitch them here on the top, which would give it a nice effect if you'd like. I don't particularly want that. I don't mind that they'll be kind of loose in here, but if you want them completely tacked down, you would, tack, you would sew all the way along the side edges on both sides. But I'm happy with this, so I'm gonna take out my pins. And I wanted to point out, you might find it easier when you are sewing right here to attach them um, once it's pinned into place if you flip it over at your sewing machine because you can really see the shape of the neckline and stay that eighth of an inch away from the raw edge. Either way. And so now that I have them attached, I'm just gonna cut off this extra little flap of fabric right here and here. Part of the process that I find so fun is that when I'm creating one of these dresses, I get ideas as I go. Sometimes I look at it and I think, oh, it needs a little something extra, or I think it's just right. But as I'm looking at this dress, I started to think that maybe two really big oversized buttons would be really cute down here. I went through my button stash. I didn't find anything I liked, but I grabbed these two just to give myself an idea if I liked it or not. I definitely know that I want them bigger than this, and I want them to maybe stand out a little bit better. But then I started thinking I would like a red waistband here. So I just grabbed some material and just fold it in half here. And I laid it across here like this so I could visualize and then put the buttons on top. Now that's quite cute with the straps going underneath it, but then I wondered what it would look like with the straps on top. So because I didn't attach these in the middle, only at the bottom and the top, I'm able to take this strip of fabric and slip it, whoops, slip it through these straps in order to get a visual of what it would look like. Of course, you would have to imagine that this rough edge with the floral fabric peeking out won't be showing because that will be caught in the seam of the skirt when we attach it. But so here's the idea of the straps on the top, which is quite cute too. So I'm not really sure if I want this, this waistband strap to go over them or under them. Part of me thinks that I'm gonna do it on top because I usually use some kind of ribbon or some border to hide the seam from when I attach the skirt to the bodice. So this could work as that embellishment that hides the seam if I put it on top of these straps. So at this point, I'm leaning towards making a really long strap like this that would go on top and I would actually sew it on as one of the finishing products and then put the buttons on but I'm gonna look for different buttons so I'm kind of liking this idea well I just can't decide yet so I'm gonna set my bodice aside and start working on my skirts 
like I said before, I think I want three layers of skirt. I'm not sure totally, but I think so. But for sure I want two. I want one in this floral print and one in the red. And because I'm doing this overall effect, I definitely want the top layer of skirt to be in the red. Okay, now I have both of my skirts cut out. I have one in eight inches and the other one in four. I'm gonna bring them over to my sewing machine and hem the sides and all the way along the width of this skirt on the bottom and the other side. And I'm gonna do it to both of these skirts. All right, I'm back from the sewing machine and I've hemmed along the sides and the bottom of both of these skirts. Now I'm gonna bring it to my sewing machine and gather it by running a large top stitch across the top of both of these skirts. For more details on how to do this or more details on how to make a dog dress in general, please check out my video on how to make a dog dress. I will tag it above and put it down in the description as well. Before I attach the skirt, I need to close this bodice off. I need to take my top piece of bodice, which is right here, and the white lining piece that I cut out and sew them together. And now we can flip it right side out. From this point, we'll bring it over to the iron and iron it nice and flat, making sure that our back piece of bodice is going all the way towards the back and not showing from the front side so that we have a nice crisp line only showing the top side of the bodice and no white popping forward. So I'm gonna go to the iron and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back from the iron and this looks nice and flat. I've got the white all towards the back and out of the way, it's not showing from the front. And now I can attach my skirt. I've got both of my skirts pinned into place here, the bottom one and the top one and I'm going to bring it to my sewing machine and run a stitch line all the way across this bottom. And if you want more information on how to do this, you can check out the video that I will link above and down in the description on how to make a dog dress that I go into much more detail. All right, I'm back from the sewing machine and I've connected both of the skirts by running a top stitch all the way along all three layers, the bod one layer of the bodice, one layer of the red skirt and one layer of the floral print skirt. And when I pull it to the front side, I think it looks so adorable. I'm really, really, really liking this. This little cute um, kind of apron-like red ruffle that is attaching to these straps, the kind of suspender straps is so stinking cute. So I'm really happy with this so far. Our next step is to turn this dress over and close up the back. We wanna hide all of this rough um, material back here. And so we're just going to pin this bodice, the back white part of the bodice, which is just the lining, into place by folding it over one time and then taking that piece and laying it over the top of this raw material here where we attach the skirt. So just fold it over and take some pins and pin it into place. Now that I'm pinned into place all the way along this edge, I'm gonna bring it to my sewing machine and sew an eighth of an inch from the edge all the way along the white material from side strap to side strap to secure it into place. Okay, this is all nice and closed up, side strap to side strap. We have no raw material showing. We can flip it over and see that everything looks great on this side as well. And so now it's time to add something to the waistline. If you look really closely here, when I'm sewing along this back edge here, concentrating on catching the white material over the skirt, I don't always get a really great even line here on the front. As you can see, there's um, quite a bit of a jump from this white, this red stitch line to right here where the skirt and the bodice meet. And that is why I add a cute little waist line with ribbon or something like that. And also, I think it looks much more cute when you put something across here. It just makes your dress a little bit more fancy. So I played around with some ideas already, and I think I'm gonna go with the idea, well, obviously I can't put the, piece underneath anymore because I've already attached a skirt. But I decided to go ahead and attach the skirt because I like the idea of the red border going all the way across the top and then I'll put buttons on top of that. So I need to cut out a strip of red material 
that will reach from side strap to side strap. So I'm gonna measure how much I need and cut out my material. This is about 25 inches across this way. And so I'm going to be sure to cut material that's a couple inches longer than 25 across. And I want it to be close to the same width of these straps here. So about two inches, which I ended up cutting four inches to make this two inch strap because I am again gonna cut it out and sew it into a tube in order to put it on here. Okay, I've sewn a tube with the length that I cut out and the only difference from the tubes I made before to make the straps on the dress is that I closed one end of the tube. The other end is open. I'm gonna pull everything through that end. But this end I closed and cut off my corner. So now I just need to pull it all to the right side. All right. All right, I've turned my tube all the way right side out and I've taken it to my iron and pressed it nice and flat. This is the end that we closed up. We still have one open end. The end that is completely closed up, you're gonna want to put all the way up to the edge of the side strap, one of the side straps, just like so. And we're gonna pin this into place. Just butt it right up to the end here and pin this all the way along the waistband of the skirt. When you get to the actual skirt portion, you'll need to use pins instead of clips if that's what you're using. and just continue to do this. Make sure that you're covering up this strap at the bottom. Mine was peeking through a little bit, so I'm gonna adjust that. When you get to the second side strap and the tube where we did not close it off, we'll need to cut some of this extra off, but first we want to be able to fold under the end about two times before we attach it here. So for me, I folded about a quarter of an inch each time, so I need about an extra half an inch longer than this side strap. So I'm gonna determine where that is and cut my fabric off at that point. And now I'm gonna fold this raw edge under once, squeeze it a little bit and twice until it matches the length of this side strap and then clip it into place. That way we'll have a nice clean closed edge here. Okay, so now I'm all the way attached. And so what I'm going to do is bring it to my sewing machine and starting at one edge, I'm going to sew all the way across this bottom edge to the other side. And then I will stitch up this side and come all the way across the top edge here until I reach the other side and close it off by going across the side strap here. Make sure that you take your time doing this because you want to have some pretty even stitch lines. You can do this about an eighth of an inch from the edge or even a quarter of an inch. And sometimes I think it's cute to make your stitch size a little bit bigger than the smallest stitch. I believe my smallest stitch is two or two and a half. And I like to bump it up to about three to make the stitches a little bit larger. I think it makes a nice finished touch on this. So again, take your time and make sure they're nice and even. All right, I'm back. And as you can see, I stitched all the way along the top and the bottom. And I think this turned out lovely. It's hiding our wonky seams that are under here. And it just gives it a really nice thick waistline, which I think I like quite a bit. And it goes quite well with these little um, overall straps. I think it's a good um, complement to each other. So at this point, we could be done embellishing the dress or you could add some kind of flower or a big bow, but I really like the idea of putting some big buttons right here. And I still don't know which buttons I'm going to use. So in the meantime, I'm gonna work on attaching Velcro to my neck straps and my side straps. So I've decided that I want to add a really little delicate eyelet border here on this red skirt. So I'm gonna take it back over to my sewing machine and from this edge to the other edge of the red skirt, I'm gonna fold this eyelet under two times and hem this off first. 
And then just from this edge all the way across, I will sew that on. And I think that that will give this a nice look. I just felt like the red skirt was a little too short for how much of this floral material is showing. And when I went through my stash of material, I came across this and I think that this will be really lovely together. Okay, I've attached this pretty little ruffle all the way around the red skirt and I think it's a nice addition. I like the difference in width from this skirt to the lace to the bottom floral skirt. So I'm very happy with that. And so finally, all we need to do is attach the buttons. And so I went to the fabric store today and I came across these really adorable buttons here. They're little wooden buttons that have a flower shape to them. And I like the natural um, effect that the wood gives them. And I thought it tied in nicely with this floral print here. So I'm going to hand sew these buttons right here on the waistband where the shoulder straps come into um, the waistband here. So I'm just gonna hand stitch those on on both sides and then we will be done. All right, guys, I'm all done. I've attached these really adorable buttons. We have all of our Velcro closures attached. And I think that this dress turned out just lovely. I cannot wait to ship this off to Chloe and her mom can try it on her and hopefully send us some pictures of her wearing the dress so that we can share them with everybody here on Life of Posey. So thank you so much for following along. I had a wonderful time creating this dress for Chloe. I think that it was so much fun to make a dress with somebody else in mind rather than my dog. And I am really pleased with the outcome and I can't wait to do more giveaways because this was just absolutely so much fun. You guys, please take the time to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and give this video a thumbs up and share it with anybody else you think might be interested. I thank you so much for following along today and I can't wait to see you next time.